Hello, hello! My name is Jennifer and this is Jen the Bookworm and thank you very much for coming to spend a little bit of time with me. If you have been here before, I really appreciate your continued support and if you're new, then welcome. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about a couple of books that I've read recently. Um, my October TBR was all about spooky stuff and, and scary books and that vibe, that atmosphere. So I read uh, quite a few actually. Um, I'm in the process of reading Stephen King's It right now, uh, which I think is what's going to finish out my month. But before I got to that, I read quite a few uh, classic horror books. Um, and I wanted to read a few more. I wanted to read some H.P. Lovecraft and I wanted to read um, like Camilla and Dracula. But I didn't get to those books um, before I discovered a whole month of short books was not doing it for me. Um, so I, I, I broke my TBR and I'm reading a really long book now. But in the process, I did read these three books, these three classic books that I thought I would do a video on all three of them together and kind of compare them um, with each other. And the three books that I read are uh, The Woman in Black by Susan Hill, The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson, and The Turn of the Screw by uh, Henry James. Uh, those three are um, considered classics, uh, have been written a long time ago. Um, some of them are have more relatable language than others, uh, but all of them were hailed as being very good uh, reads, so I picked those up this month. Um, and two out of three ain't bad. I didn't enjoy The Haunting of Hill House, but the other two I enjoyed quite a bit. Uh, so let's get into why that was. So The Woman in Black by Susan Hill was um, a fairly short book, about four and a, and a half hours long or so. Um, it was narrated by Paul Anstell. I did uh, listen to this on um, audiobook. And it was beautifully written. I really enjoyed the writing style and the accessibility of it without, it felt like an older classic book, but it wasn't too difficult to disseminate the language and, and really understand what was being said. I think the author did an awesome job and really laying out the atmosphere of um, of this place. This is a ghost story and the home of the woman in black um, is she lives on uh, the house is on a um, an island. Well, it's on a, a marshy area that becomes kind of an island when tide comes in. And so it's very easy to get stuck out there. Um, lost out there. The weather plays up with the fog and and the atmosphere is spot on. It is exactly what you want for a horror book. It was compelling. I never felt like I was just kind of waiting to get to the end. And at the end I was, I was playing Minecraft while I was um, listening to much of this. Uh, usually when I'm doing audiobooks, I have to be doing something else. Housework or video games, solitaire sometimes. I play a lot of solitaire while I'm reading. Uh, today I was playing, this day anyway, I was playing uh, Minecraft. And um, doing some mining and doing some menial tasks, things that you don't necessarily need your full attention for. And, but when it got to the end of this book, I went and found... A safe place to be and just sat and listened to it and experienced the ending and it was enough for me to do that. I didn't need other things for my attention which is rare. Um, I, so I, I really think that it was very well written and the ending was very good. It gave me chills. Maybe it wouldn't have done that if I had been reading it as opposed to listening to it. Uh, I tend to think that if you get a good narrator, 
It really sets the atmosphere, it really sets the tone, and it allows you to access the material in a different way than maybe you would if you are just reading it and having to come up with the voices and interaction and stuff in your own head. So that was the first book that I that I read for uh, the month. The second book that I wanted to cover in this video was The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. Now I love the adaptation um, that Netflix has. I've watched it a few times. Uh, it was very good, very well acted, very, very good, very well directed. Um, and I had heard that the Netflix special is not much like the book, that it's like they're, they're alike in name only. They're not really the same story. And I found that to be for the most part true. Uh, there were a couple of um, characters, um, you know, if you've seen it, and this won't be spoilers, but the, the main character, Eleanor Vance, uh, the character of Luke, the character of Theo, Theodora, are all three in there. There's a doctor, Dr. Montague, which if I'm not mistaken, plays a small bit part in the TV show, but not in the same capacity. I think he's a psychologist for, um, for Nellie, for Eleanor. Um, but anyway, the, um, so some of the, the characters are there, Steve and Sher uh, Cheryl, Cheryl, Shirley, Cheryl, can't remember the oldest daughter's name in the Netflix. I think it was Cheryl. Anyway, those two are not characters in the, in the book. The, um, Mr. and Mrs. Dursley or character, Dursley? Dudley. Hmm. Mixing up Harry Potter. That's not good. The uh, caretaker and the housekeeper are in the book, but they are, they all play a big part and they're odd in the book. They don't come across like they do in the, the TV show. So I accessed the TV show first um, and I, I had watched it a few times before I read the book. I don't think that that necessarily colored how I feel about the book because my problems with the book aren't so much that the storyline is so different. Actually, it was kind of interesting to see in which ways that they were similar, which ways they intersected. The um, couple of, of really good um, kind of spooky scenes in the TV show actually were taken from the book. So it was, that part was kind of nice. It was kind of nice to see where, where things were the same. Um, but my problem, I think, was with the writing, which a lot of people will be surprised by because Shirley Jackson is heralded as such a, a great writer. Uh, a lot of people who have read this particular book of hers has commented on how beautiful her writing is, is and they just can't wait to get into something else of hers. I did not enjoy her writing. Maybe on something else I would, but I did not enjoy this book. I, for the whole way through, I would have DNF'd it, except for that I'd like to do a more in-depth screen to, uh, or book to screen adaptation of, of video on it. And, and one day I hope to do that. That's the only reason I didn't DNF it. I would have and gotten out of there quick if I could have. It was not good. Um, and I'm not going to spoil the story for those people who know what the story is. It's a haunted house story. Um, and I'm not going to spoil anything, but I want to give some examples of the writing, the reason I didn't like the writing. There were, there's a part in there where Eleanor is driving to the house and she, I don't like Eleanor as a character. She is too mousy and muley and and me, 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 and, and it wasn't good. It was not good. It was just, just too, I'm too shy. I'm too much of a little mouse to say anything. I, it was unclear why she was being invited to 
the house, Dr. Montague in the book is inviting a couple of people to come stay the summer with him in this house to document um, supernatural phenomena. That's the premise of it. So she's invited for reasons I'm not sure. She, um, I think the reason why she was invited is because she had an incident like her of some poltergeist incident or something when she was a child, but it wasn't surrounding her. It wasn't about her necessarily. So I'm still unclear as why she was invited along. She drives up to, to Hill House and she's just, the, it was just not good. It was, it was, she driving along and she spots this house and it's got two lion statues in front of the house and she just has a complete daydream about, oh, what it would be like to live in that house and I would brush the teeth of the lion with water and bleach and soda every day and I would take such good care of the lions that everyone in town would love me because I'm taking such good care of the lions. Oh, but now I'm not by that house anymore. Now the house I can see is a little cottage and it's covered by rose bushes and you can barely see it and I would be able to have such a cute little home here and be just by myself and and I would have you know, fix the, the, the house this way. And I would do the, this thing with the house. Oh, now I'm not at this house. I'm at this other thing. It was very rambly. It was very like pick a train of thought and keep it. Or, I mean, it was, and maybe she was just trying to show the kind of character Eleanor was. And if that's the case, I didn't like Eleanor. And if you don't like the main character of the story, the person whose point of view you're in most of the time, that's going to make a difference. So I did not like that. Also, there was a part when she's at the house where she's like sitting by the fire and she thinks to her, she looks down at her feet and she realizes she's wearing red shoes. And I mean, this isn't a direct quote, but this is pretty much how it went. It's like, I have red shoes. Eleanor is somebody who has red shoes. Having red shoes is a function of being Eleanor. Eleanor has red shoes. I have red shoes. That's it. This is over and over again for a paragraph about her red shoes. Then the relationship between her and Theo was weird. Like at first they, she gravitated towards Theodora. I think it was having somebody else. She was the first to arrive in the house. So having somebody else there made it less creepy. Um, you know, she, they really took to one another and then she hated her and she wanted to see her die at some point. And then at the end she wanted to live with her. And I don't understand that journey, but I feel like this was the premise or this, this might've been the inspiration for single white female. I don't know, but it was weird and it just wasn't good. Um, I don't know how they got such a great Netflix adaptation out of this material. They, much of what you see in the show, much of what you would like in the show is not in the book. So, and the reason for me not liking this book isn't that. It isn't that they didn't, it didn't follow the show closely enough because obviously this came before the show. That isn't the problem. The problem is, is that the writing was not accessible. The character was not a good character, the main character that whose point of view you're in the whole time. The, the, I, I didn't enjoy the writing. Um, I think I got to the end of it and I was listening to it and I dozed off a little bit. I may have dozed off through the most interesting part of the book because when I woke up, they were basically, you know, um, they were, well, I don't want to, when I woke up, they were doing something that indicated there was something interesting that happened, but I was so uninterested in the book by this point that I did not want to rewind it and try to listen to what might've been interesting. I just wasn't interested. And when I got to the end of the book, I was so happy. <laughs> so, uh, this was definitely a, <clears throat> a one star for me. I just, I wouldn't read it again. And I'm a little bit dubious on whether or not I'll read uh, Shirley Jackson. I have another Shirley Jackson book 
and um, I'll maybe I'll try it at a later date and see if I like it. If I do like it, then maybe it's not the writing that's the problem so much as that character. I, I just did not like the Eleanor character. The last one that I read that I wanted to review in, in this was The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. This was such a great book. Now, it was um, narrated by Emma Thompson, and Richard Armitage did the, the intro. Emma Thompson is just fabulous, and she was so good in this. She, she really brought it alive, and... It followed the the Netflix adaptation, The Haunting of Bly Manor, more f closely followed this story than The Haunting of Hill House did that that book. So the it, and it's good that the that the TV show followed the um, the script based on the book so closely because <clears throat> I'm not sure on one pass through of this book, I would have gotten as much out of it if I wasn't somewhat familiar with the story. It was beautiful writing. It was really beautiful writing, but it was not necessarily the most accessible writing. They're just kind of the way things were phrased, not the most accessible. However, like I said, having had some experience with the, um, the content, some exposure to the content beforehand, it really did help. But I thought it was, it was beautifully um, written. It was beautifully performed. Uh, it was only about five hours long. And um, I definitely would recommend that story. Now there are some definite changes that they made for the Netflix adapta adaptation. Changes for the better, I think. Um, as much as as I liked this book, I really liked the show, but I felt like this book provided some good bones for that show. Whereas Haunting of Hill House, I mean, they almost took nothing from the book. They took the names of some of the characters, some of the characters, and then they added in more characters. They kept the name Hill House, but almost nothing else in there seems to line up. I mean, there's a couple of scenes, but not a lot of them. Um, <clears throat> so I think with um, Bly Manor, I really enjoyed that, but I feel like they had a lot more good bones to work from in the, uh, the turn of the screw. So I was pleasantly surprised by that one. After my <laughs> experience with Shirley Jackson, I was like, oh no, I don't think I can get through another one of these. And and so I was very happy that it wasn't, it wasn't like that. Um, so I would say the woman in black is a solid, um, three and a half, four star rating. Um, turn of the screw also three and a half, four star rating, uh, haunted, uh, the haunting of hell house one star. And I feel like all of them attempted a certain aesthetic with their writing and with their uh, descriptions. I felt like one of them fell short, but overall uh, I thought it was a good experience. It was an eye-opening experience. I don't tend to read a lot of classic books and I don't tend to read a lot of, of the older foundation books, I guess you could say for the horror or the fantasy or the whatever it is I'm reading at the moment. I usually read a lot of the foundation pieces, so it was kind of nice to go kind of back and read some of the more foundation pieces to the horror that I know and, and really like today. Um, and I'm hoping to get to some of those books in my October TBR that I'm no longer getting to, um, such as um, there's another Shirley Jackson uh, a story about the Salem witch trials that sound interesting. There's a Lovecraft book that I um, that I got that looks interesting. There was another one. There was a couple of of short stories. Oh, Amityville, things that are are not new, 
but foundational pieces that, that maybe by reading them I can learn to appreciate the more new horror that's coming out, things that I'm reading now. Um, you know, reading some of the the inspiration for Stephen King might make reading Stephen King much more meaningful. I kind of know where he's coming from when he's writing and so on and so forth. So, so that's what I have for you today. And I really appreciate the time you spent watching this video. If you've gotten to the end, then thank you very much. I appreciate that. I hope that you like this content. And if you did, I hope that you will subscribe if you're not already. It's free to do. It helps out my channel a lot. And it lets me know that you're liking or not liking whatever I'm bringing out for you. So... If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. In the comment section below, if you've read any of these books, uh, please, please comment. Please let me know what you read, what you thought of them, if you're planning on reading any of these. Even if it's The Haunting of Hill House, and maybe especially if it's The Haunting of Hill House, if you've read Shirley Jackson before, if you've read this story before, and you want to make an argument for, a respectful argument please, for why I'm wrong, let's talk about it. Let's chat about it in the, the comment section. I'd be happy to do so. Um, but in the meantime, I appreciate you coming and spending this time with me, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.